Hey, Joe Zarzer here for another installment of Zarzer Law TV. We have a couple special guests today. Russell Dohan, who you all know if you've been watching this channel at all. Russell is a really good friend of mine, uh, a board certified civil trial lawyer, a member of uh, ABOTA uh, in, in Miami-Dade County. That's where his practice is, Dohan Law. And uh, Russell and I have talked on videos before about uh, the virus and about jury trials and what, what it's gonna mean for us to be involved in this. And Russell told me earlier this week that he actually had a friend that was trying a jury trial in Miami-Dade County. And I thought to myself, that must be a joke. And it, it wasn't. Russell sent me a snapshot of something from the Zoom he was watching because apparently he got the link to it. And I thought how, how wonderful it is that somebody is stepping out and trying to figure out a way to, to make our jury system work um, in, in, in this environment, especially with Miami-Dade being as, you know, as crazy it is down there with, the, with the, a virus. And the one thing that uh, I think uh, Russell and I spoke about for sure last time we were, uh, did a video was that the great thing about watching what happens in Miami is for purposes of Florida law, Miami is like the incubator, right? So all the laws come out of Tallahassee, they get down to Miami and they get hashed out, right? because that's the first place where you're most likely going to get a trial with an issue that comes out of a law that comes out of Tallahassee. Well, this is another example of why it's always important to stay in touch with what's going on in Miami-Dade County, because they, they pretty much are pushing the envelope, right, with everything. And here's another example. Yes, this week, Miami-Dade County was the first county in Florida to conduct a civil jury trial via in the Zoom age. And fortunately, Russell knew the lawyer that was involved in that case. And Russell asked the lawyer, who's a member of ABOTA too, which is a, an organization, the American Board of Trial Advocates. It's an organization that one of its main missions is to preserve and protect the right to jur your jury trial, which is the Seventh Amendment. And Brandon happens to be a member of the ABOTA chapter in Miami-Dade County, as is Russell. And so, it just worked out that Brandon, uh, even though he had a busy week trying a case, he was able to join us on the video. So here, uh, Brandon, thanks for joining us. Russell, thanks for being here. Um, we, we had, first of all, Brandon, uh, aside from, uh, from uh, all that went on after the case was tried, tell us what it was like to, to come up with this idea, who came up with it, and how did it come about? Well, um, there was an administrative order that was entered by the Florida Supreme Court, uh, I guess maybe a month, month and a half or so ago, um, that designated five counties in Florida to um, be, I guess, the trailblazers um, to put on a, a trial, I guess, part over um, the Zoom platform and, and part in person. And um, from there, uh, Miami obviously was, was chosen as, as one of the five. I think Jacksonville was one, maybe Orlando, West Palm. Um, um, once uh, Miami was chosen, you know, Boda asked um, for volunteers to, to get involved and uh, volunteer one of our cases, and um, that that guy ended up being me, and um, was was obviously very grateful for the opportunity um, to be the one of the first attorneys to be involved in such a process, and, and it was really enlightening and, and a great process. So, um, I guess it started at the Supreme Court. And trickled its way down here to Miami, and um, next thing I know, I was in court this week, everyone with masks on, face plates, um, you name it. And I was going to go over that. If we could go to that vi the image of the jury selection. Um, so this is an image of the jury selection. Here's you down here, right, um, right. on Zoom, and here I guess this is the other lawyer over here. Yes, yes, sir, Matt Baldwin. Okay. And here's the judge in the middle. It looks like the judge, when we took this screenshot, the judge was giving instructions, I guess, to the, to the, to the potential jurors, right? right. And, and the bailiff is down here, and he's got a block, and I guess this is the court reporter, potentially. Um, yep. And so what was it like to pick a jury like this? Because, you know, we've all done it in person, but what was it like to do it via Zoom like this? Well, I thought the process itself was, was easier than I anticipated, but it's only when you get down into the courtroom do you, do you see potential pitfalls, at least I thought. Um, the, the individual who ended up being the, the foreperson of the jury was a gentleman that I thought um, was about 18 years old, was a lifeguard, 
Um, and um, when he actually came into the courtroom, looked like a completely different person, very well dressed, um, and and was was quite meek on on the Zoom platform. Didn't really say a lot. Was giving a lot of one word answers, just kind of like pulling teeth trying to get anything out of him. And lo and behold, he ends up being our jury foreman. Wow. Um, so I think you lose uh, quite a bit of the nonverbal analysis that you typically do, um, seeing people's general reactions, eye rolls, you know, arm, arm, arms crossed across their chest, things of that nature. Um, when you're focusing in on one of the squares in the upper left-hand corner, it's almost impossible to see what's going on in the lower right-hand corner within an, in another square. Right. Whereas if you were in person, I guess you can use your periphery right. and, and see folks, you know, on the other side of the jury box potentially and, and how they're reacting. So I, I think from the perspective of how did it go, I thought it went as good as possible on the platform itself, although you do realize some of the, certain of the pitfalls once you um, actually get into the courtroom and see them live. Right. And then how did y'all do, once you picked a jury and you got this, uh, the six people that were going to be on the jury, how did you, how did you uh, protect them from the virus? Because they actually came to the courthouse, right? That's correct. All right. So how did that uh, work? Well, the, the 11th Circuit down here in Miami um, met with um, a series of doctors on a, almost on a weekly basis to try to get all the protocol down in terms of, you know, these are the things we have to do to make sure everyone's abundantly safe. So ultimately what happened was we were initially supposed to do the actual main jury selection in person. The pre-qualification process where we got it down from about 120 down to the uh, 20 or so to actually be part of um, the actual jury selection. One was supposed to be on Zoom. The other one was supposed to be uh, in court. Then the spike hit. They decided to do the, the whole entire jury selection over Zoom. Um, from there, uh, everyone went down or was supposed to go down to the, the civil courthouse, the one behind Russell right there. Yeah, and, thank you, uh, Russell. <laughs> it ended up that... Um, it ended up that they, they felt the air quality in that building wasn't as good as, as perhaps it should be to keep everyone safe. As Russell knows, that, that building is over 100 years old, right. and, um, and, and we're building a new civil courthouse now, anyhow. So they moved us next door into the family courthouse that was a little bit more modern and updated. Um, but so, they, to start, so to they start, they, came, they took everyone's temperature at the, at the door. Uh -huh. um, Everyone was spaced out, really couldn't get anywhere close to one another in the entire courthouse. We had to um, wear masks at all times, couldn't take it off at it for any reason. Um, this this is a picture, I don't know if anybody can see it, but some, there's a lawyer standing up at the, at the uh, lectern and you, 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 everybody's got a mask on, right? And the court reporter, the judge, and then the jurors are all spaced out. I don't mean spaced out as in they're not paying attention. I mean, they're spaced <laughs> out physically, right? From one another, and 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 so that they didn't have to touch the exhibits. What did y'all do about that? We had uh, individual exhibit binders um, prepared for each person in the entire courtroom: the clerk, bailiff, judge, all the jurors, all the attorneys. They all had their own independent exhibit binders, so there was no you know sharing of of anything tangible that that could I guess transmit the virus. Um, but the, you can see on the right hand side of that picture, what would ordinarily be the jury box that would have ordinarily had like 12 or so seats. Um, the one in the upper right hand corner and in the lower left hand corner. Right. There's probably about 12 seats in there, but only a few of them were used and they, they spaced them out in front of the jury box so that there were six feet in between everyone. Um, and then uh, there were uh, a couple of the attorneys actually sitting in what would have been the gallery so they couldn't sit at the same trial counsel table together. Oh, wow. Okay, well, well you pre it, it, obviously the virus presented some challenges, right? But you were a pioneer in the sense that you and opposing counsel and these jurors uh, actually stepped out because of our Seventh Amendment and, uh, and, and tried to see if we, if we could make this work. And it, to some extent it worked, right? There were some issues, but, sure. but to some extent it worked. Absolutely. Um, I think that there are certain pitfalls um, for cases that were significant, that would be significantly bigger than the ones, uh, the one that we tried. Right. Uh, I mean, obviously the, 
the parameters that were given to us when we were trying to pick a case was it had to be one or two days. So obviously you can't fit, you know, even I would think the simplest of bodily injury claims in, in, that, in that amount of time, unless it was like a damage only case. Right, right. Um, but they wanted to, to not use a lot of experts, uh, obviously limit the witnesses. Um, so we had some real tight parameters in terms of what could be selected. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Brandon, we appreciate you doing this. Um, thank you for protecting our jury system. Thank you for stepping out on the ledge for us, for all oh of God. us in this country and, and, and doing this. Um, I think it's, uh, it was bold and it was brave and it means a lot to everybody here. And I hope all of us in every county start following your example. Um, because I, I, don't think we could, I don't think it helped any client for us not to, to have jury trials in the civil system. I think everybody's suffering because of that. Uh, amongst all the other health concerns, we've got these legal issues that are still happening. So, Russell, um, I know you watched the trial start to finish from, from your computer, or, or you tried to. What was it like watching it from, from, uh, from your computer? Oh, it, it was really exciting for me. I mean, I just... You know, Brandon did a phenomenal job. I, I was so empathetic for him being there. Um, I was so appreciative for him and the other lawyers being there. I was very appreciative for the judges. There were basically three judges involved. You have the chief judge, uh, Judge Soto, uh, Judge Butchko, who tried the case, and Judge Bailey, who has been a real pioneer. She's the, she's the mechanical pioneer on the ground. She no doubt, no doubt. And, um, and she has you know, been the forefront electronic filing down here and electronic hearings down here and getting Zoom up and running down here for our hearings. We've done like, is it something like 30,000 uh, electronic hearings so far, Zoom hearings down there, it's a big number. Uh, and this of course is the first jury trial. But you know, we all, uh, uh, we all really need uh, jury trials, not to ne necessarily get to that point in the case because 90 plus percent of the cases don't get that far. But knowing it's out there, knowing that it's an option is what gets the parties always to the table to resolve these claims. And that's why it's just so important that, that we have something out there to look forward to like this. And, and you know, they just did a phenomenal job. Watching it has, uh, it, you know, it taught me a, a lot of things. It, of course, it, it's even, I was thinking about it as, as watching yourself back sometimes. Like, I'm, you know, I was in watching the, the lawyers and everything, I would put myself in, that, in their position. And um, I was wondering what I would do different or what I you know, might say different or how I would feel. And it, it, it looked really uncomfortable for them, um, but they were persevering through it like champs. So, Brandon, I gotta, I gotta say this, Russell, it was like Russell was watching a football game or something. He texted me and he was like, I'm watching our trial. And I'm like, I didn't know, what are you talking about? You're in trial? He's like, no, but we're, <laughs> our county's trying a case and my buddy's trying a case. And he was so excited. And I was like, what is he talking about? I, and I thought to myself, it must be a bench trial. And I got back to the office and I texted him and I said, are you talking about a bench trial? And he's like, no, it was a jury trial. I'm like, holy cow, that's awesome. So thank you again for uh, sharing your experience with us. Thanks for, for putting yourself out there and your client. Both of y'all should be commended for that. And, um, and I appreciate you appearing in this video for us. And I look forward to um, meeting you in person someday. My and, pleasure. Uh, I appreciate your protecting our Seventh Amendment. By the way, Joe, before we go, just, you know, you've got to put a huge shout out for the jurors. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you know our, our system, and we always say this at the end of every trial, and the judges always say this at the end of every trial, you know, nobody wants to serve on jury duty when they get that paper. Um, but by the end of the trial, I think most jurors feel like they've done just a really good service for their country, their community, for everyone, and enrich themselves. Um, so jury services is so unbelievably important. And, and those, here they're risking their lives too. Yeah, and for these jurors, I was just going to say that to these <laughs> jurors to come down and do it in this environment. Right. I mean, just, you know, really, really wonderful uh, people doing that. So. Right. Uh, thanks for pointing that out, Russell. That's true. The judge and the jury are uh, phenomenal components to this process always. And in, and in this environment, they're heroic. So um, on top of that. So thank you all very much. Anytime. Take care, everyone. Yep. And um, if you have questions for Russell or for Brandon or for me, you can find us on the web at zarzalaw.com or 855-HIRE-JOE. We'll also tag Brandon's firm down, down below, uh, Cole Scott Kassane, and they have a branch office here in Pensacola also, I believe. So we'll make sure their law firm is uh, in the credits down below too.
Y'all take care. Thank you very much.